Good morning, everybody. This is Brother Stuckey, and we are going to be working on our critique really quickly for this week. Let's go ahead and take a look What we'll do is we're going to come in and look at the instructions a little bit and just make sure you have a good understanding. Now, most of you have read these instructions, but just as a review, the project overview this week is basically you have been asked by your employer to analyze one of their existing ads and use the elements of that particular ad to create another ad that looks like it belongs to the same campaign. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed or not, but Quite often, a company will come up with two or three different ads that all look like they go together, like they all belong. And you'll see them published in different areas. You might see one on Facebook, but a different one in a magazine, but you recognize that they're all connected. So that's the big thing we're going to be looking for in this situation. You need to choose an ad that has been well designed and has at least one line of text and a company logo and it needs to be vector or raster based. Now that basically opens it to anything, just any kind of digital ad really. Now you need to create a new ad. You're going to use Photoshop or Illustrator. It needs to match the same dimensions as the original ad. And it must look like it's from the same campaign. Then that means you're going to use design, color schemes, typography, layout, images, messages, etc. that look like they belong. We want you to be able to type the text in yourself. I don't want you copying and pasting text from another image. And you will need to use the logo in the ad as well. So you're going to have to look for this logo if you haven't yet. So let's go ahead and just take a look. We'll go right into our Facebook page and here we have this area where you've posted and so hopefully things are making sense. Okay, here we have IKEA early Christmas sale. Starts the 19th of October and we have this little image little tree growing, just a little sprout, and then we have the after Christmas cell. Now that's very smart, good work there. Um, the Christmas lights, the bells, everything like that, it looks like it belongs to the same one. The logo is in the same place, the text is in the same place. We're basically talking early Christmas cell and after Christmas cell. We have the dates that it starts, great job. Nice and clean, white background, everything about it looks like it belongs. So for this particular ad, I wouldn't recommend any changes at all. This is exactly what we want done. So use this as an example if you are confused. Let's go ahead and move on to the next really quick. So here we have this photo of some headphones and the only beats you will hear are the ones in the music. Okay, we have this picture of the, looks like a clarinet maybe, and a hammer, and the headphones blocking out the sounds of the hammer, I'm assuming is what that means. And let's look at what the next one is. So here we have a piano, or a digital, with the headphones blocking out, I'm assuming, We're taking out the, okay, it says tune out the tapping from the keyboard and start tapping your foot to the music. Okay, so great job there. I like to see these two comparisons. Um, the one thing that I would be concerned about here is a hammer is obviously very loud. I would expect any headphones to tune out the sound of a keyboard. And so I wonder what we could do if we could find something a little bit louder something that relates to the hammer. What's another loud tool that we could put in there? Um, one thing that I would recommend is this set of headphones isn't the clearest image that it could be. I wonder if we could find one that's a little bit sharper and if we could clean it up a little bit, 
you can see where the extraction in Photoshop took place and we have a little bit of white light. So I would recommend cleaning this up a bit. And then I wonder about the keyboard, if we could shrink that down a little bit. Part of it seems to be cut off. Let's see more of the actual digital keyboard or piano and not just cut off at the top right there. Now we have the logo in place and the text. So it's a great concept and it's off to a great start, but just with those few minor changes, I think that we would begin to be connected a little bit more. Great job on that and let's go on to the next. Okay, rising homeless rates caused by, and wired beware spoilers. And let's look at the next one. AI will replace all jobs by 20, and period. Okay. So in this particular ad, I can see what you're doing. We've placed the logos in. Great job there. We've placed the text in as well. But in this particular case, I'm going to have to ask you to find something with an image. Okay, that's a big part of that is we're looking for images here for something a little more visual than just text. Um, You've done a great job, it looks like it belongs, but let's just see for one minute. We'll look in here. Okay. So I don't see a specific in the instruction that says you have to use an image, but I'm going to step in and say, I want to see an ad with an image and I want to see that duplicated in a campaign. So that would be the thing I would recommend for you. Because I'm pretty sure that it probably does say some of that we are supposed to have images. That's a big part of this class. So, okay, you know what? We have 24 more comments that we need to move up to now which we just skipped right over. So we'll start up here at the top now. Here we have the original. The fewer ingredients you have, the more you've got. Simply better. We're looking at cream cheese by Arla. And let's look at the next one. And same thing. This looks great. This is a great example. I love the fact that you even went with different color schemes, but it worked. The color of the cream cheese container, chooses that color scheme. Here we have natural light, fresh cheese. And on the green one, this is probably something like, okay, well, this was just a cream cheese spread. So that was cream cheese and this one was natural light, fresh cheese. Okay. And notice we got the, the nice berries, that bright red contrast, similar to what we see here. Looks great. We have the bagel. Here we have a cupcake kind of spread with the cream cheese frosting, it looks like. Very nicely done. Great logo, nice line of text. I love these text boxes in here. Very nicely done. Great job. We have these drop shadows. Now, one thing that I wonder would be here, rather than drop shadows everywhere, we do have, have a few, but we also have a little bit of an outer glow. So try that in Photoshop. Take your text or your little box here, like you got these green boxes. So you take your blue boxes and you can actually choose an outer glow instead of a drop shadow, or you can even change the color of the drop shadow, just change it to white or a really light yellow. And you can do the same thing with your drop shadow or your outer glow and maybe add that in. That would be the one thing that would just tie it in a little bit better, but that's been really critical. I'm not going to absolutely require that, but I'd recommend playing around with that a little bit and experience it a bit. Very nicely done. Good work. Okay, so here we have Dasani. Can't live without it. Okay, and let's see, do we have, so we have this slide with the color. Let's see, opening slide. Okay, looks like this is our next one. Great, nice picture. I love the pouring the water and seeing it splash all over. Great location, love the color scheme. I really like the design of your slides overall as well. Very nicely done there. 
Great job. So one of the things I'd be curious about was whether you photoshopped that in or if you took the picture or if that was another existing image. Maybe it was, just a curiosity, but great job. Let's just look again at the other one. Very simple, very easy, bright color, solids, and the same thing. Very happy with that, and great job showing us your slide overall as well. Okay, press to hear the motor start. <laughs> okay, so here we got the original, and touch to fill the gas on your hands. Okay, so let's go back again. So here we want to hear it, and here you say, touch the gas on your hands. I think what you're saying is probably to feel the revving of the engine, perhaps, or I, I but you know what, when I hear this, I automatically think of the gasoline spilling on my hands and that terrible experience when you're trying to fill up a tank and you accidentally end up with a little bit too much. I wonder what we could do. What could we come up with that would just be a little bit... Here we're talking about a sense to hear. We can't taste, but we can see feel um, press to hear the motor start and touch to fill the gas on your hands okay you've met the requirements that's the good thing but I wonder if we could come up with something else. I know the assignment's gonna have a few, so I'm sure you'll come up with a few other ideas for your slides. So good job there. I'm just a little concerned about the phrase because it turns one away a little bit. But I love the clean, neat look of this ad. You've done a great job there. Um, I do wonder, perhaps, if the thing we could do would be choose different colors of the car or maybe even other series of the car, or makes or models. That might be something worth considering. So that we're doing a little more than just adding the phrase. And then we got this circle up here, where here it was the little start button. Here we're kind of missing that element. So that would be something I would consider is what else can we add in there? Maybe we talk about features of the car, like press to fill the... Um, seat heaters or the air flowing or to maybe we have a little button for for um, opening and closing the windows or locking the doors or cruising or changing gears. There's a lot of different things we can do, so I'll be interested to see what you come up with there, but this is off to a great start. I really like what you've done, so let's move on to the next. 100% crit, one shot, and to kill. Okay, so this is the original ad, and here. Okay, now in this particular situation, I think you've actually cleaned it up quite a bit. You took a very, very busy ad here and actually made it look quite a bit nicer over here. The problem with that is it actually doesn't look like it belongs in the same ad campaign now. Not that that's bad because you've improved upon it. The images look nice, everything's placed in, the text looks great. So I'm not going to be too critical on that, but keep it in mind and make sure that as you create your other slides that you keep a very similar look to everything. Try and keep them all connected. Because here we have the original, and here we have the new one. Okay. 
here that can in every face of story add campaign and let's see here so this is the original ad okay now this obviously hasn't been started yet but Basically, remember, we're going to be playing on the similarities. This would be an example where you would find another picture of a person, and that's the campaign that Canon is putting on, is they're showing pictures of many different faces. In it, they're probably showing diversity in gender, in nationality, race, and so on. But look at the picture, and what are some things that really stand out? One is this lady is in very sharp focus. And the background is very much out of focus. We have a very shallow depth of field. So that would be the thing you'd be looking for is an image that is similar. So you're going to be looking for portrait headshots of people that are in focus with shallow depths of field. And then stick with the message that you have here. And that would really complete the project. OK, all in or nothing. I love these shots. These athletic shots are so cool by Adidas and Nike and other companies. Let's look at the next one, all in or nothing. Okay. So we have this one and then we even added a little bit of color. Uh, so let's see, the original had a touch of color in it whereas this one was in all black and white. Now I see what you did here, adding the color to the shoelace, and I'd want a little more realism if that was what you were going to do. Otherwise, I'd just recommend looking for another image because this actually is not a black and white image at all. This is an image with not very much light except on the subject itself, and so the color comes in. But if you look, it's actually not black and white. So that's one of the things you're going to really be thinking about. I was finding something a little more similar than just black and white. Also, I wonder if we don't go with more of an athletic shoe. Here we're talking about a soccer player with cleats, and here we're talking about this guy with a pair of shoes in his hands, and I'm not exactly sure that they're even Adidas shoes. They might be, so don't take my word that they're not, but I'd look for something similar. What other sports? Could we show? Could we show a woman in cleats? Um, or could we, and could we show them in athletic apparel? So you notice that here we have the jersey and the shorts and the socks and the shoes. And then we got this kind of street guy almost, kind of preppy. So we're losing that look. So I would see what we can do about making it look like it's in the same campaign. Okay, let's move to the next. Here we got surfing is everything. Okay, original ad with some commentary. Okay. Now, one of the things that I really like about this is notice these brush strokes that made up the word surfing. Now, we come in here to the new ad and we actually lose that. The only similarity we see here is that there's a surfer and that we use the kind of cyan blue color and the same phrase and logo. But I want to see you duplicate that with a brush stroke. That's going to take some practice, but you can do it. Look for some tutorials online on YouTube to show you how to do that, and really you'll be fine. Um, here we don't actually see the surfer, we just see the spectators. And that's an important part because it really leaves it up to the beholder to decide what's going on. What are these guys excited about? And so I'd be thinking about those things. So a little more similarity. I'm okay with the same, with using that image of a surfer because it does relate, but here we're looking at the surfer, whereas in the original, we're looking at it from the point of view of the spectators. So be thinking about that and see what you can come up with. But good job, off to a nice start, and let's move on. Okay, here 
we have now the colors of life can last a lifetime ad with Valspar. And let's move down. Okay. So I love the slide. I like the color. I like what you're doing here, but I don't see the next ad. Let's see if maybe we come down a little bit. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Here we have a flower dipped in paint. Very nicely done. I love to see those drips flowing down. I wonder if we could add a little bit of dimension, a little bit of realism. And the way you could do that is grab that yellow layer in Photoshop and maybe contour it or bevel it a little bit and add a little bit of light and shadows in there. Look for some tutorials on um, beveled edges or contoured edges in Photoshop. It's a pretty simple effect that would add just a little bit of dimension to those drops of paint dripping off. Let's look at the original and see if you can see what I mean. See, we can see some shadows and some lights in there. And it'd be really easy, I think, to do the same thing with this. Great job. I love what you've done. That's an awesome example using a flower. The only thing that I might recommend would be finding a similar item. Here we're talking about the beauty of this musical instrument, and now we're talking about a flower. Both beautiful objects, obviously, and both full of color. So I'm not going to say switch it out, but I wonder if you could switch it out. Could you choose another instrument? I can't think of one right off. So I like that you used the flower. And then I'm sure with your other sides, you pick a few other colorful items. And that's what actually what I would do. So don't worry so much about consistency of finding a musical instrument as much as finding beautiful colored objects like you've done. So good work there. Let's move on here. We got the shoe works if you do. Picture of these kind of vintage Nike tennis shoes. Nike's logo and slogan. And let's look at the new ad. Okay. Same thing, nice background. Good work there. I like the similarities that I see going on here. Looks like you even matched the font pretty well. Um, I believe the font for Nike is Gotham Bold. Look and see if you can find a free one, and that would give you a little bit more realism. Just because it's a little bit more bold than the one you're using, but it's pretty darn close. Just seeing if I can see any differences. I don't, and so I mean that's being ultra picky, so don't worry too much about that, but just so you know, um, that's something you can do. But great job with the shoes and the background. Very nicely done. I like what we see. Okay. Here we have the slide campaign for women's Nike. Better fit or better for it campaign. You have to get good before you are good. Okay, so we have this woman working out. Let's get into the new ad. Very nice duplicating here. I like to see these shapes and it looks like it belongs. It looks like part of the same campaign. I like that you even changed the wording a little bit. If you don't move it, you will lose it. Okay, great. Very simple. Um, we got the colored apparel on just a simple kind of white and shadowy background. We got the Nike logos in place. Things are consistent, looks great. Good work. Okay, original ad, freedom is found. And let's look at the next one. Seize your adventure, okay. So here, I'm assuming that Guess is probably the denim brand that these individuals are wearing. And as we move down, we get into this person with this kind of um, 
blanket or robe on. And so the thing I'd be looking for is, I like that you found a black and white image and you kind of got this Western landscape going on. But I wonder if we need to find more denim approach, okay? So let's see if we can find a similar image. It doesn't necessarily have to be of the couple. It can be of one person or it can be two again. Um, but we need to find somebody with the apparel and we need to find a better logo for this. It's just a little bit hard to see. So I'm gonna recommend looking around a little more and seeing what you can come up with there. Um, that would be the biggest thing I'd recommend. Let's make sure they're consistent. I don't see the consistency. Um, let's see, we're using kind of a slab serif typeface here. And in this one, we're using, okay, very similar on the font. So that's a good thing. So the typography is good. But notice that what this one is centered, the top one, the original is centered, and the bottom one is left aligned. And that's an inconsistency. So I'd find a way to make those consistent. Center them. Try to even stick to the same location on the page. And see what you can do with that. Let's move on to the next. Okay, so here we have a Coca-Cola original ad. Got these kind of the vintage colors in here. So let's look at the next one. And here we have a Coca-Cola image again. Um, taste the feeling. Okay. I like that we're in a very relaxed situation. Ladies just sitting, taking it easy, nice and cool. Got the logo, got the slogan. Um, one thing to notice is Taste the Feeling is in a sans serif white. And here, Taste the Feeling is in a serif and black. So I'd make sure and change those so you're consistent between the two, okay? Coca-Cola probably uses a sans serif typeface for everything, for their slogans. That's probably an official Coca-Cola typeface. And so then bringing in and using one, changing the color to black, and two, adding a serif to the font would not be a good choice. So make those consistent and you'll really be on the right page. Um, the saturation is down a little bit on this original. And so that's something I would consider doing the same thing in here. When you're in Photoshop, you can go down and I'll just, what you would do is you'd want to select your layer that the picture is on. And then you would come down and there's, on your layers palette, you have seven small icons at the bottom. And one of them is a circle with a line through it, basically. And one side of it is colored and one side is open. And you'd click on that. And you'd go down to Hue and Saturation and click on that. And then you'd probably come in and just take your slider and just decrease the saturation a little bit just to give it kind of that vintage look that you see in the other image. So if you need some help with that, get a hold of me and I'll walk you through it. We can meet in the connect room or somewhere and we can talk about it a little bit and see what we can come up with. Okay. And it looks like that's it. So good job, everybody. I love seeing what you've done. I look forward to seeing the remaining and we'll just go from there. So good luck. And if any of you need to meet with me this week, feel free to contact me and we can see what we can do. Have a good one. Thank you.